Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Lock in Your Success Trade and Market Update for May 26, 2013. I'd like to wish everybody a happy Memorial Day weekend. Before we get going, we would like to remind you that the presentation is for educational purposes only. and We are not broker-dealers or financial advisors, and we are not making specific trade recommendations. Any trades and or results covered in the presentation may or may not be live trades. In the event they are not live trades, we do the best we can to make sure that we're representing things as accurately as possible. And also the risk of loss in trading securities, options, futures, and forex can be substantial. So please be aware of all your risks prior to placing any trades. If you get a chance and you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to visit our trading blog and take a look at our Rock M3 and Bearish Butterfly video series which are doing extremely uh, well with sales right now, and we have a lot of heavy customers, so glad to say that. And let's get going with the markets. As expected, we uh, did have some upward movement last week. We did make it to the 1660 target level that we had on the SPX. We actually blew off a little bit higher up to the top side of our resistance uh, diagonal trend line. That shouldn't be terribly surprising to anybody. And then we backed off there significantly and actually came close enough to what I would call a 20-day moving average touch. So the question is, do we hold these levels or do we uh, you know, just bounce right up? I think this is going to more or less create a little bit of confusion here and we're going to get a little bit of sideways movement. And I would look for a move anywhere from here drifting down to our lower end trend line here to possibly uh, you know another retest of the top and then then come down so uh, more or less a sideways range but a fairly wide side range range up from uh, our 1685 level possibly down to around 1620. if we take a look at the russell or i'm sorry if we take a look at the dow we had the same thing uh, you know as we said we were, we were kind of creeping along this trend line as expected this move we we're saying was larger than expected and if you do a resistance line off some of these past highs, this makes sense where where the where the Dow actually went. It was stronger than I thought it was going to be. Certainly expected uh, exceeded our price targets. Now we've come back down, and it really really wants to hold this trend line. This index is also overdue for a 20-day moving average touch. Wouldn't be surprised to see us break down to the 20-day moving average, and probably all the way down to 15,000, I would say is considered completely normal movement. Any highs, I would think are limited to our past highs that we've already put in here at around the 15,540 uh, level. And if we run to the NASDAQ, same thing, we're terribly overextended. We shot up a little bit higher. Uh, called this one really close, right? This was 30.30 uh, we had on a price target, and we exceeded that with a bit of a blow off to 30.53. But as far as a closing price, we're really, really close here. Then we back down as expected. And it's trying to hold this 20-day moving average. I think we're probably going to drift lower, possibly down uh, into this trend line area uh, eventually. But again, I would not expect higher highs, at least for the coming week. And if we go all the way back and we take a look at our Russell. Same thing. We um, hit, our, hit our 1,000 level that we're expecting to hit. Blew off past it all the way to 1010 because we had that uh, news in the morning. Institutions came in and sold it as would be expected with a move like that. And we had a pretty good down move on the day we blew off. This is a really, really good daily range here. We have some interesting things to talk about on this day here because it had some decision points to make when we blew through our resistance area here that we can kind of talk about um, coming up when we talk about our trades. So as far as where the Russell goes, 20-day moving average touch, trying to hold it, also trying to hold this trend line here. This is an awfully steep trend line. I would expect if we break down under here and come down closer towards our 50-day uh, moving average and this more major support level at 950. And again, I think this is going to create some confusion where we don't know where we're going. We're kind of in the middle of a range. And uh, a maximum of 1010, a minimum of 950. Wide 60-point range here. We don't really know where uh, it's going. But uh, if I had to say something, I would tend to say sideways for the week. All right, let's take a look at our positions. As usual, we'll start with the V condors. As far as our V condor goes for June, if you remember right, we were getting beat up pretty good with this because we had such a wide or large uh, market movement. 
beginning of the week, we were in this position here. And on Monday, with a continued up move, we're down about 3,200. We have a maximum loss in this of about five grand. With our continued up move, I ended up, I did end up on Monday buying back. I'm sorry, it was on Tuesday, buying back one of these 1030 calls as the market continued to roll up. So if we go to Tuesday, this will change to 10, and we're uh, pushing about 3,600 dollars in the loss column on. Wednesday, nothing happened. If we go all the way to Thursday, the market, of course, started to back off fairly significantly. I came in here and I sold three of these uh, 1030s back off again. And today, or as of Friday, I should say, we're sitting here at about uh, $2,700 down. And the position looks like this. It's a tight position. This one could go either way. If the market does what I think it's going to do and kind of stays flat, then uh, there really shouldn't be a problem here. We should be able to pull some sort of profit. If the market's really good to us, we may even get our um, 3,500 out of this, which is uh, the minimum we like to make on uh, any given month. All right, if we go to our V Condor for July, this position here at the beginning of the week, actually we can just go to Tuesday because um, I only made one move on this uh, position here and I'll show you why I did it. On As of Tuesday, this is what the position looked like. We were uh, up a little bit of money and haven't had a whole lot of, whole lot of market moves since so we, since we put it on, only about 10 or 20 points. And, of course, we pulled back in towards the center of this. So if we look at our T-log on the 23rd, what I did is I rolled my 970 call to 1,000. And the reason I did that was to pull up my expiration graph a little bit. We were falling into the very V section of the condor, and if the market's going to hang, and I'm kind of thinking the market's going to hang around the range for a while. Since that's the case, I'm starting to raise my the center of my graph here, and you know if the market stays here, as we get safer and safer from side to side, we'll gradually continue to raise this up. But for right now, this is what the position looks like, and we are slightly up on this position here. Let's go do the bearish butterfly trades next. The June bearish butterfly, I ended up on Wednesday with the with a blow-off move. If you remember here, when we blew off through here, the position did go down uh, in that morning over its um, maximum loss numbers. So I just took the trade and closed it out. Although, you know, as you know, I was expecting this to come back down into range because we called the top of around a thousand, and I was very aware that this was probably a blow-off top, which uh, you know the trade would have been perfectly fine had we left it till the end of the day, and if we were still in it here, I think the loss numbers are down under nine thousand dollars on the trade. Um, I did keep it open in Option View just to show how we're doing yeah so it would it would have been down 8800 but like i said i did close it at its loss numbers because um you know this, that's a sample trade and we're not taking technical analysis into account there we're only taking relatively good numbers we were past our loss numbers i shut it down however i think it was a wise choice at this particular time to to hold it open and i would be willing to bet that this trade actually comes back and um it's probably profitable this month so for the purposes of the website, we're going to close it, call this closed at a loss, but uh, we're going to just kind of keep an eye on it, see how it would have done. All right, so let's go to uh, when I did get stopped out of this, I hopped into the July bearish butterfly, and I did it a couple of days early because I was hopped out of this. And if we take a look at that, this was entered on the highs of Wednesday, more or less, and I entered it at 990. And this position here uh, looks like this. So this is doing perfectly fine. Of course, we pulled right back into it, and we're up money right away. We shall see how this goes going forward. And what else do we have open? We have open an M3 trade. And I uh, did make a couple of movements on that this week. If we take a look at the June M3, we had on Monday... One of the things I did uh, is we had, this This is what we had for a position. And this call too, by the way, it, it wouldn't be a bad idea to roll this 850 call up. It's way, way in the money and it's using capital for no reason. But as of right now, it's still at 850. If we come back here, uh, as of Monday, we are at 10 long 990s. 
16 short 950s, 4 short 940s, and 10 long uh, 890s with a position that looked kind of like this. We are way outside of our tent. So one of the things I was going to do, if you remember right, this is a $37,000 account. So I'm almost maxed out and we're doing a $50,000 $50, trade, which you can do with an M3 because we can control our capital. And one of the things I was doing here, knowing that the, or thinking the market may stay up here or not pull back into our tent area, is prepare to, to uh, take some capital out of this so I can roll it up later. So what I did is I sold 10 of these 890s and bought uh, 10 900s with uh, selling a vertical spread, or actually buying a vertical spread, which if we go to the end of the day, you can see I rolled these up to 900. We pulled some capital out of the trade, and we only have about 27,000 or so. And I can, if the market doesn't pull back in the next day or so, I can go ahead and make some moves up and chase this a little bit, which I did end up doing. And I did that again on Wednesday when the market just looked like it may break higher. And uh, it, one of the main reasons I did this is because you know, even though we were perfectly fine in the position before, I didn't want it to fall back and settle in our, our, our saddles so much. So one of the things I did is on Wednesday morning, I came in here and I sold four 949.60 put verticals. Then I sold 10 900, 920, condors. And then I bought 10... 990 at 1,000 puts, and that's again a capital reduction technique. And from here, that put us in a position where we're we're along 10 920s, short six 950s, short six uh, four 960s, short 10 970s, and long 10 1,000s. And the position looks like this. See, so now with this pullback, I'm actually in my tent area. And like I said, I was expecting the market once it comes down maybe to range out for a little while. Now we're at least in a high theta position, so when it ranges out, we can take advantage of that. And from here, if we go to Friday, we did not have any other movements. And as of Friday afternoon, the position looks something like this. So this is sitting really nicely. We have a nice high theta number. We have a fairly flat T plus zero line. And let's see, we're only running less than... Yeah, less than 25,000 in the trade, so less of our, half of our planned capital, which, again, we have to keep our capital down because of the, the account restraints with this particular account. So I thought that would be a good experience as far as trading a $50,000 trade in a $37,000 account. All right, and the last thing I did was on Wednesday, I did make a rock trade entry, and the timing on that wasn't the best. I did that, again, in the morning when the market was up at its highs. I thought we may end up ranging out you know, earlier in the day when we broke that level. I was concerned that we may end up ranging, coming up here, breaking this, just coming back in here and kind of ranging in this range for a while. So being concerned about that, I did enter the rock trade. I thought it might be a good opportunity for that when the market was up. This here was our original entry. We did 10 990 butterflies. And to balance it off at the time, was going to take five 1030 butterflies and we had a nice looking position right here of course the market started to come down hard and once it looked like we we're going to go negative I did start to get concerned a touch early about the downside and was thinking that it made sense since um, I entered when I shouldn't have I entered at mid noontime usually I'll enter towards the end of the day what I had in is I had orders in and I automatically or more or less by my daughter, uh, roll my five of my 990s down to 970. So towards the end of the day, you can see we rolled some of these back just to control our, our delta a little bit, and we closed at positive 97. Now the actual move here that we're, we should do is to take all 10 of these down to 970, but I wanted to make sure that the market was going to hold its lows or, in other words, not just completely um, come in and get bought back up again here on Thursday or Friday. So, since it didn't get that bought back up on Monday morning, didn't look like it was particularly bullish either. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Friday morning didn't look particularly bullish either. Friday morning, I rolled the other 10 of these 990s down to 970. 
if you look at what the position, well, this is what it looks like after that half rollback, which looks like, like a reverse rock position, which is a perfectly good position, but it's only half size, right, because I never actually fully scaled into this. And if we shoot to Friday afternoon, in the morning I had rolled back uh, ten, uh, another five of these uh, 990s back to 970, and we're sitting here pretty much flat delta with a position that looks like this. So from here, if we continue down, we roll back into an M3R position. If we uh, start to roll back up here, we're going to start adding in our 1010s and bring this graph right up nice. So this position looks fine. It just uh, kicked around a little bit on entry because of, of an entry issue. And uh, hey, that happens. And that is our positions. And once again, I'd be, I'd be tended to say the market is going to be more sideways than anything else, although it's going to be a bit of a range, but I don't think it's going to break out really hard in either direction. And I hope everybody has a great holiday weekend and look forward to speaking next week. Thank you and good night.